And she said, all I remember him saying was, it's another girl. And next thing she knows, she was lying on the floor and he was repeatedly kicking her in her stomach. He almost left her for dead. It's important to note that this issue is affecting British-born subjects. We're not against abortions. We believe boys and girls have an equal right to be born. Mostly it's about women themselves feeling that their status in a family, in a community, will be elevated because they have this boy, uh, this trophy boy. Now what I know from supporting victims, that pressure can be directed to people who are pregnant in forms of psychological abuse, even physical abuse, in their own self-worth, making them feel bad if they find out they are crying in birth and indeed if they give birth to a daughter. Mm. Because of the large diaspora communities that come from the Indian subcontinent, we do have a, a problem. There is a trend amongst South Asian communities and we can't ignore that. And we can't ignore in India there's actually a population crisis of more males to females. Now those notions are transported across through belief, values, traditions here in the UK. You know I know that personally. So we have to be honest about the trends. You know this is not racial profiling. I'm a campaigner against forced marriage and unbased violence and I know that these abuses are significant within South Asian communities, and I have to say that. It's almost as if we've inherited this ideology that women or girls are not as valued um, as boys. I became very concerned about the fact that abortion on the ground of gender is happening in this country. Women are telling us that it's happening and yet nothing has been done about it. For the government to say that there is no evidence, I think it is disrespectful. It's also a, a slap in the face for them. Personally, I believe this is underreported. It is hidden. The figures are far greater than what we know. That's the evidence and that is the fact and we have to say that and not shy away from that for the fear of offending people and the, the fear of treading on cultural toes. The victims we are talking about here that are under pressure to abort female fetuses are hidden. They are silenced by their communities where this is happening. Somebody has to speak for them. The really important thing here is that we give all human beings the right to choose. The right to choose to have their pregnancy to be supported throughout that pregnancy. That choice is being taken away from them. We believe that the law needs to be clarified because there's mixed messages getting through to communities. This is, this is no different to other forms of abuse where we have a duty and a responsibility to be able to talk to a victim for them to unfurl what is going on without the fear of disrespect and offending them. We're hoping to achieve two things. First of all, to achieve clarity in the law. At the moment there clearly is confusion in public understanding so we want to clarify beyond any doubt that abortion on the grounds of the gender of an unborn child is illegal. But secondly we also want to help the women who are under pressure to have an abortion because they are carrying either a girl or in some cases a boy. The government can't look away, they must fight this. I'm really pleased this initiative is happening and that Fiona Bruce is taking this forward because She's speaking on behalf of the people who are silenced. Obviously, I want to see the government look at how they can help these women so that they don't have to go through these traumatic situations. There needs to be more practical um, help as well within GP practices, within hospitals, especially for those who've had girls. We need people who care about this issue to contact their MPs to make sure that something is done to draw their Members of Parliament's attention to the opportunity to vote on this bill and to stop sex selective abortion in this country. We are talking about saving the lives of individuals who are not even born yet.